Hello everyone, it's Christina from Hourwood Home. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about my vegetable gardens for 2022. I've got my binder with my notes about that and I'm sitting with some of my plants which I don't think you can see in frame. But I've got some seedlings indoors and I'm going to be doing a lot of direct sowing as well. So let me talk a little bit about what I'm planting and where. So this year I'm pretty much planting the same things I always plant, but I'm doing less of some things and a few new vegetables as well. One thing I do every year for my birthday is set a list of goals that I want to accomplish for that year. It's kind of like New Year's resolutions, but instead of starting on the calendar year, I start on my birthday and go to the next birthday. One of the things I wanted to do for my 30th year was to can 100 jars of food. And this may sound like a lot of jars or not a lot of jars, depending on how you feel about canning, but this was just kind of a nice round number goal for me to try to attain. Probably the thing that I was most excited about was canning tomatoes because we use a lot of tomatoes throughout the year in various pasta sauces and as pizza sauce and just for a lot of recipes in general. So I was very excited to have a lot of jars, what I considered a lot of jars of tomatoes and when we ran out in the winter I was pretty disappointed because I really liked using homegrown tomatoes all year. And that got me thinking about what exactly we like to eat throughout the seasons and what I'm buying at the stores that I could potentially be growing and preserving at home myself. So that's a long-winded way of saying I was really intentional with what I wanted to plant this year. I started making my list probably after harvesting everything last year. I thought about what I wanted to start growing, some things that maybe we weren't eating as much of anymore. Um, for example, beets. I don't really like beets, so I don't cook them often. What I usually do is can them and then just give them away to family and friends. But we weren't seeing as many people over the last few years, so I just ended up with a ton of extra beets that I didn't want to use. So this year I'm still planting beets, but just not as many. Let me run down my list of things that I want to plant and explain a little bit about that. So here they are in no particular order. And as I said, I'm reading from my binder, so that's why I'm looking down off camera. I'm going to be growing spinach, tomatoes, bell pepper, beets, onion, garlic, a few different types of beans. I'm thinking yellow pole beans and scarlet runner beans. Scarlet runner beans are so nice. They've got huge pods and the seeds, or the beans inside are bright pink. They also have really nice red flowers and they are crazy climbers, so they're really nice to look at, but they also provide nice shade. I have some Swedish peas that my pen pal in Sweden sent me last year, and I'm going to be planting more of those, but doing succession planting. So I'm going to start some in the ground as soon as it's safe, uh, there's no danger of frost, and then in a few weeks I'll plant some more so that I can have a continuous harvest throughout the summer. I'm going to be doing two different types of cabbage this year, a green cabbage and a purple cabbage, in hopes that the cabbage moths will stay away from the purple cabbage, but we're also going to be building some type of barrier so that the cabbage moths can't get to the cabbage and eat all the leaves. I'll be doing carrots again, as well as parsnip. I have a few different types of zucchini to try. Last year I bought a zucchini plant from the the garden center and I think it came with a fungus because it spread to my zucchini and cucumbers and all my squash plants. I could still get a harvest but it was probably not as big as it could have been if this fungus wasn't introduced. I'll be growing some acorn squash as well, some celery, um, a few other different types of squash which I can't remember off the top of my head but I have them written down. Corn is something I'm excited to start this year. I've never grown corn before, but I think that'll be really fun. I have some various herbs and cucumber. I am I usually do a pickling cucumber and an English cucumber, but I don't know if I'll do a pickling cucumber variety this year because 
they're really only good for pickles and I still have a bunch of pickles left from last year so I probably don't need any more. So I'll just do the English cucumbers because those are nice to eat fresh or in salads or something. I'm going to be doing some snow peas this year. Um, one of the first things we grew in our gardens back in 2013 was snow peas and we saved some of those seeds so I think it's kind of fun to have our own like mini heirloom variety. I don't remember what variety they are or what brand of seeds they were but it's kind of fun to just have a variety that we've been consistently using. Something else new that I'm trying this year is birdhouse gourd. It's a gourd that you don't eat it, you use the outside for making a birdhouse or a water bottle or just decoration. There's more to it than that, that's just kind of the simplified version. And the last vegetable I'll be growing is potatoes, which I do every year. I'm going to be doing some different herbs this year in addition to what I usually do. I'm trying to dedicate some space as a tea garden, so herbs and plants that we can harvest and dry to make tea throughout the winter. Those plants are lemon balm, echinacea, spearmint, and chamomile. I wanted to find a few different or a few additional plants, but I had a hard time finding the seeds for them, so maybe I'll just keep looking online and hopefully I can find some there. The other herbs I'll be growing are calendula, dill, parsley. I think I have some um, lemon balm. Oh, I already said lemon balm. I have some other herbs that just kind of self-seed and take over a certain garden, which is what I want. I have a plan of where I'm going to be planting everything, so I'll try to get a close-up of that and insert that somewhere in this video so you can kind of see a rough layout of our property as well as all the garden space to work with. Keep in mind, the drawing is not to scale, it's not accurate in any way. This isn't even really how things are laid out on our property. I just tried to arrange my gardens in a rough way on my paper. I, as I said, I'm starting a lot of seeds indoors, but I'm also going to be direct sowing most of them actually. When I start my seeds indoors, I found that a lot of them were getting too spindly and growing way too fast and just not able to harden off when I put them outside and then planted them in the ground. So I decided I'm going to just start some of them indoors and then do the rest outside and hopefully that works. I decided to write a list of what I wanted to start indoors and the date that I was going to plant it. This would just help me check to see if things are germinating as they're supposed to, and if not, I can consult my list and realize, okay, this is, you know, it has a two week germination period and it's only been one week, so I'll give it a little bit more time. Or this is supposed to germinate quickly and it's been three weeks and nothing's happened, so it's time to re -sew. What I've started so far are tomatoes to bring one over and show you. They're quite tiny, I know that, but it's fine. It'll work out. A lot of people start their tomatoes much earlier. I started mine on April 6th and I chose to start them at that point because I don't plant outside until at least the first week of June. Where I live most people plant at the end of May, maybe the third weekend of May, but we sometimes still get frost at that point and I don't want to risk my plants getting any frost damage. One year we did plant a little bit early, end of May, and we had a frost warning so we went outside and had to cover all of our plants to make sure they didn't get any frost damage. Thankfully they were fine but that was a lot of work and I'd rather just wait a few extra weeks to make sure there's no danger of frost. All that to say, my tomatoes may look small compared to some that have maybe been growing for longer indoors, but this is what works for me, so that's what I'm going to keep doing. I also planted some bell pepper, which has not germinated yet, so I'm going to have to check the seed packet to see how long it takes for it to germinate because I might have to sow those again. 
I also did some cabbage, which is right here. This is the red cabbage. The green one is just starting to pop up now. And I did my birdhouse gourd, which is not doing anything. So once again, I'm going to check the seed packet and see if maybe they're just a slow germinating plant. Something I wanted to try this year was growing marigolds and planting those in between my vegetables, probably just in my main garden, um, just to see if that helps keep away any pests, because last year we had a major slug and earwig problem, which was really gross. And I tried some different methods, but it didn't seem to work. So hopefully the marigolds can work some kind of magic and keep pests away. If not, they're at least nice to look at. I also decided to plant some nasturium right here. I read that they do not transplant well and they should be direct sown, but I guess we'll see what happens when I try to transplant these. I'm growing them for two reasons. One, because they're nice and I used to have some, but didn't save the seeds from them. Two, they make a lot of really nice shade. So I'm planning to put them along some of the chickens enclosure to make some shade for them during the hot summer. And I decided to plant them indoors first instead of direct sowing into the soil because there's a lot of grass and weeds that grow up in that area and I didn't want the nasturiums to be competing with those weeds and grass. So if it doesn't end up transplanting well, I guess I'll just sow the seeds outdoors and hope that they can fight up through the weeds. That's all I've planted indoors for now. I am planning to do some herbs in the next few days. Oh, I actually do have some herbs already started. I think it's kind of hard to see on camera, but I have some chamomile that I am going to be growing. And I couldn't find celery seeds, so I just saved some celery from the grocery store. I cut off all the stalks that we were going to use and then rooted it in water and this started growing from that. And then I put them into little pots. So far only one looks like it's doing well. I think this one might be dead. And this one may be on its way out. I'm not sure. I'll probably look again for celery seeds when I go to the garden center again, but I don't know that I'll find any. So th that's all that I've planted indoors for now. I will be doing some calendula. Uh, let me check my seeds. Calendula, some summer savory, which is new for me and I'll be planting some more spearmint in some containers, probably today or tomorrow. So that's what I'm planting indoors, and here's what I'm going to be direct sowing into the gardens once the soil is workable and the danger of frost has gone. Uh, let me tell you what I'm gonna be planting based on what it's gonna be planted with. So in my main garden, which is the first one that we started and the one we call the main garden because for a while it was our only vegetable garden. I'll be doing some potatoes, the cabbage, onions, and my tomatoes. That garden gets full sun all day and it's quite out in the open, so a couple years ago we put up some fencing around it to help with wind protection. We have a new garden, which is just a little bit back from the main garden. I'll be doing the pumpkin and corn there, and I'm very excited for that because I think that'll look really nice when it's growing. I have a garden that I've previously planted uh, a bunch of different things, usually beans, and this year I'm going to be taking that over for all my herbs. There's a garden at the front of our house under our living room window and that was a flower bed which I took over last year for vegetables and I planted rhubarb there so I've seen that coming in already which is nice. I'm planning to just let it take over the whole garden. I'll also be doing my celery, garlic, and a small patch of beets in that garden. 
it's a pretty shady spot so I think these plants will all do well there there's some planters around our patio in our backyard and in one of those planters I'll be doing snow peas, cucumber, parsnip, and acorn squash. And these planters have nice lattice, so I'll be doing the climbing plants there. In the matching planter, I'll be doing carrots, the scarlet runner beans, and two different types of zucchini. We have some newish planters, which we call the new planters, and it's just off our back deck. It gets sun most of the afternoon and there's some lattice there as well. So I'll be doing the Swedish peas there as well as bell peppers, spinach, and a squash variety called butter bush squash. And then at the front of our property there's a planter that gets a fair bit of sun and I'm going to be doing the birdhouse gourds in that area. I want those to be in their own confined space so that they're not competing with anything and this planter is nice and deep so I'm going to be building some archway just out of scrap lumber and chicken wire or fencing or something that we've got laying around and that will allow the plants to grow up and over because I read that any type of bruising or damaging can cause the plants to rot and that's not what we want. So those are my plans, we'll see how it goes. Um, in addition to what I've already listed, we also have some raspberries growing and I'm going to try to transplant those because they're just wild black raspberries that grow wherever. And I have a lot growing in places that are really inconvenient. So I'm hoping to take some cuttings from those plants and root them in water and get them nice and established and then plant them in the ground. I probably won't see my nice thick hedgerow of berries coming in for a few years, but that's okay. It's always just a work in progress. I'm also going to be growing some more sunflowers, which I just save seeds from our chicken's scratch mix, which is a mix of seeds and uh, grains and that kind of thing. And there's black oil sunflower seed in there. So I like to just take out a handful, plant them in some soil, and they grow in nicely. That's all I'm planning for the gardens this year. I say that's all I'm planning, but things might change. We're only in April, April 20th to be exact. So I might do some things differently once I'm actually in the gardens and working the soil and actually transplanting things. But I think these are my plans for now and I'm excited to see how that pans out. And as well, I'm excited to take you along with me for some periodic updates throughout the summer and fall. If you like gardening content, I do have a playlist of all my past gardening videos, which I will link at the end of this one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a great rest of your day.